unnecessary hysterectomies are an outrage. Telling women to have functioning, healthy organs removed is an outrage. Failing to publicize the many life-changing side effects is an outrage. A number of you have driven thousands of miles, slept in tents, and flown in from other countries to be here today. According to the Western model, premenstrual syndrome is a disease. Me menopause is a disease. Pregnancy is a disease. Childbirth is a disease. From this model, I have reached the conclusion that being a woman is a disease. <laughs> Never, ever, 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 ever do you have to have your uterus removed because you have fibroids? <coughs> to every one of you, you want to hear about taxes and you want to hear about jobs. And I said, you don't care to hear about your wives being destroyed, your daughters being destroyed, your granddaughters being destroyed. I reject the notion, we all reject the notion, that women need treatment for menstruation to death. And I believe that being a woman is perfectly normal for half the population. It's not fair that women are told uh, you know, there's no choice, that your only choice is a hysterectomy. And it's especially not fair when they say, well, what I'm going to do a myomectomy, and then they get in and they say, well, how to do a hysterectomy. So for four and a half years, um, I've been doing my homework, looking for the chance to go to bat. I'm a state representative, and so that means I can draft law. Although more than half a million women undergo a hysterectomy each year, Today, twice as many women in their 20s and 30s undergo hysterectomy as do women in their 50s and 60s. As a 30-year-old woman who's been without all natural hormones, uterus, or ovaries, and cervix for the past 11 years, I really wish I had more information of, these side, of the side effects of this controversial operation before I consented. It just seemed like so many women just, just talked about, you know, um, just sort of losing their losing their creativity, losing their, the, the thing that made them um, unique and um, um, expressive and vibrant. Sadly, my hysterectomy took place on the 9th of December, 2004. And that was the end of Sylvia. Life changed forever on that cold, dark winter's day. It's just not that simple. It's just, it's just too sacred. It's too beautiful. It's too complex to just, you know, Go in there and just take things out. My name is Nicole Chuck. I'm 38. I've been an RN for 16 years. I have ICU, insurance company, ER, recovery room, and main OR. Um, my hysterectomy happened about three years ago after the birth of my daughter um, in a hospital while I was formerly employed. My husband said that he brought home a total stranger to have problems with constipation, severe fatigue, insomnia, um, urinary incontinence, and I just have kind of shut myself off from the world. I um, I felt very lonely. I thought I was the only person, I was the only woman, like my doctor said, that I was so sensitive to pain. I was a crybaby until I found hers and I spoke to Nora and she reassured me that I wasn't, I wasn't the only one. I see that it is largely through women's stories we can begin to view the myth of hysterectomy for the silent threat that it is. And I just hope that what I'm saying and what we're all saying can help you tell somebody else. And maybe we can prevent this horrible surgery. And for a nation that endlessly focuses on trivial things like whether Jenna, Jennifer Aniston still carries the torch from Brad Pitt <laughs> or whether Britney Spears is back in shape, there is very little discussion of why 33% of American women end up having their vital organs removed. Where is the outrage? When women see what happens, first of all, where, where the organs are, what they are, what the functions are, and what happens when they're removed, they don't have the surgery. And it's time to stop being so polite to all of this. Everybody's got to really do everything they can to make sure that this is the last generation of women that this is done to.